And I thank us for watching. I hope you could follow everything I did here. I know this um, is like killing an ant with an atomic bomb, okay? A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. We'll be doing geometry today and I'll tell you what, I found this problem over on Instagram as an advertisement and I'll tell you another what. <laughs> Those problems are being distributed by pre and all over the web, be it Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll tell you another another what, they are the best advertisements I have ever seen. They are everything but annoying. Not in the least bit annoying. They are really good. They are just like tiny little problems that you can sit there, pause and ponder and try it out for yourself. They are going to give you like the answer catalog. One of those answers are going to be correct. You can take a look in the comments with other people being puzzled by those puzzles and you can take a look at what they did and it's just absolutely fabulous. And especially this problem is part of the currently running 100 day challenge of Brilliant. More about it at the end of the video. And you can try out Brilliant for yourself. Use the link at top of the description. Try it out for free and take a look at the 100 day challenge and now we are going to dive right in. This problem is not too hard but it's a lot of fun to be honest and we are going to use analytic geometry today. There are a few things we need to take into consideration at first namely that we need to find the shaded area. This is the point of the problem and those are two connected squares, one with a side length of 6 and one with a side length of 4. And our linear functions that we are going to construct ourselves are going to stem from this very corner up until this corner and this corner. Those are the restrictions of the problem. And like I said before, analytic geometry, just because analytic starts with the word anal and you know me by now, daddy loves his anal. And we are going to dive right in now. So um, how could you actually start with this problem? There are actually many ways. I mean, it really doesn't matter how you turn around this sketch in the coordinates system you are going to get to the solution eventually but we can do it in a smart way namely we are going to rotate this whole sketch by 180 degrees and we are going to turn it into something that looks like this in a coordinate system namely our big square is going to be here now our small square is going to be here and I'm going to put the x-axis exactly through this part of our four centimeter cube or four meter cube, I really don't care, four length unit cube and our y axis through exactly here. This is going to make our problem significantly easier. Namely, now, what are our linear functions? Our first linear function is going to go through exactly here and the second linear function is going to go through here. And our shaded area is exactly this part. So what do we need to do basically? with regards to calculus or analytic geometry, we are going to find out what this area actually is, this area that we're having here using an integral and then we are going to subtract this area from this bigger area and then we are going to get our shaded area basically. So let us find ourselves this linear function t and linear function s and then we are going to play around a little bit with the expressions like you would play around with your girlfriend at home. So at first, what is this point that we're having up here? Well. This right here was our four centimeters basically, our four length units point and it goes up until four because it's a square. Meaning this point up here is going to be four, four, okay? Both share this point together. And then what do we have down here? Well, we are going to go two units down because this right here has a side length of six, this square. So how are we going to get until the four? We are going to get from um, four minus six going to give us negative two. So this right here is negative two as the y unit. What about the x unit? Well, obviously it's going to be zero. Now what about this right here? I mean, we are in the negatives by six units. Okay, six comma and well, obviously negative two yet again. We're just going to expand this line. Okay, now we found a lot of points and we can construct our linear functions with that just because, um, yeah, <laughs> we have two given points for um, a linear function, meaning it's uniquely determined. Now what about our t? Our t is of the form exactly ax plus b in some way, where a is our slope and b is just our y-intercept. Now we are going to start off by um, plugging those numbers into here at first for finding our slope, meaning we are going to make use of the uh, slope formula. Overall, our slope formula for a is going to be just the difference in y values. So four minus negative two divided by the difference in x values. And this is negative six and not um, positive six. I'm terribly sorry, that was probably an, an annotation there. So meaning we are going to get four minus negative six. So this overall makes six over 10. So this makes three over five. <clears throat> meaning our t at this point in time is nothing but three over five 
times x plus b. Now what about our b? Well, we can just plug any all um, pair of points into here, pair of coordinates. Let us use 4, 4 for example, leaving us overall with 4 being equal to 3 over 5 times 4 plus b, meaning overall b is thus nothing but, okay, this is 12 over 5, so 4 minus 12 over 5 is going to give us, let's expand this by 5 over 5, so 20 over 5 minus 12 over 5 is going to give us 8 over 5. Meaning overall, our t is thus nothing but, okay, we have a common factor of 1 over 5, so 3 over 5 and 8 over 5 is going to be 1 over 5, times, okay, 3x and then plus 8. Okay, this right here is our t, and now let us deal with our s. Our s as a linear function is of the same form ax plus b. And the good thing is we know what our b is going to be exactly. Okay, it's pretty easy to plug in. If you plug in the zero into here, then we're going to have that b is equal to negative two. So s actually is nothing but ax um, minus two. Now, we are just going to plug in 4, 4 yet again into here and see what our um, a is going to be, okay? Our slope, meaning 4 is hence nothing but um, 4 times a minus 2. Exactly, this should do the trick. Now we are going to add 2 on both sides, meaning 6 is nothing but 4a. We are going to divide both sides by 4 because it's not equal to 0, meaning a is nothing but 6 over 4, making it 3 over 2 overall. This means that s is thus nothing but 3 over 2 times x minus 2. And now we can basically compute, well, <laughs> integrals in some way. But we are going to make use of um, the, the area formula for triangle now because it makes matters, uh, matters way easier at this point. So we are going to calculate the area of this triangle at first. For this we need to find out what our zero of the function s actually is, meaning we are going to set our s equal to zero. Zero is hence nothing but 3 over 2 times x minus 2. We are going to add 2 on both sides. So 2 is hence nothing but 3 over 2 times x. Now we are going to multiply both sides by 2 over 3, leaving us overall with 4 over 3 is equal to the, well, just to um, equal to our root that we are having here. meaning. What is the side length that we are having here of this triangle right now? Okay, this side length is going to be exactly the distance between 4 and 4 over 3. Meaning, what is the absolute value of 4 minus 4 over 3? Well, this absolute value is going to be exactly, okay, we are going to expand this by 3 over 3, so absolute value of 12 minus 4 over 3 is going to be nothing but 8 over 3 because everything's positive. Meaning the side length here is going to be 8 over 3. This side length that we're having here is exactly 4 obviously. Meaning what is the area formula of a triangle? Okay, it's just half the area of this um, rectangle basically. So we are going to have those side lengths multiplied together. So 8 over 3 times 4 and then divided by 2, half of the area of a rectangle, meaning this is going to give us 32 over 3, so this makes 16 over 3. Okay, this is the area of this triangle, and all that's really left to do is to find the area of this big boy right here, of this big weird rectangle that we're having here. Meaning, what's the area of this thing? Well, this is just the integral from 0 to 4. Okay, I hope you can see this. We are going to take the area interpretation of the integral from 0 to 4 of our function t integrate with respect to x. So from 0 to 4 of, and what was our t exactly? This is 3 over 5 times x and then plus 8 over 5. Okay, this makes 1 5, 3x plus 8. We had this before dx. Meaning overall, this is nothing but 1 5, 1 5th times, okay, this is going to give us 3 over 2 times x squared plus 8x, evaluated from 0 to 4. And now we can plug all of this in, okay, if we were to plug 4 into here, we are going to get, this is 1 5th times, at 0 everything's going to vanish, if we plug 4 into here, this is 16 times 3 over 2, um, 16 over 2 is 8, 8 times 3 is going to give us 24, and then plus, okay, um, 8 times 4 is going to give us 32, meaning this is nothing but um, 56 over 5, and now we are going to subtract 
this area that we have found out exactly here, 16 over 3, from 56 over 5. And then we are done with our problem because this is going to give us the shaded area. I hope you can see everything I did here. It's pretty easy actually. So the area of our shaded region is going to be 56 over 5 minus 16 over 3. We are going to expand everything. This by 3 over 3 is going to give us um, 100. 86 this by 5 over 5 this should be 80 divided by okay and 15 is the common denominator leaving us overall with 88 over 15 and this should do it this right here is the area of our shaded region and i think that's watching i hope we could follow everything i did here i know this um is like killing an ant with an atomic bomb okay using analytic geometry on something like this but it's way more fun in my opinion and I for myself think that analytic geometry is way more intuitive than elementary geometry. I don't know why that is, but I really love it more. And like I said before, this right here has been part of Brian's 100 day challenge. And they introduced it a while back, like, like two months ago, when all of this Corona stuff started. And, and it's a pretty cool concept. So it's one problem each and every day, and you can basically get a score over there on Brilliant. You're going to go through all the problems day by day and you're going to get yourself a score and see where you are actually. This is pretty cool in my opinion. Y you can check how good you did over the course of 100 days. And the problems range from really easy to kind of hard obviously. Okay, so from one sword up until five swords. And this one right here was with like two swords. Okay, so, so it's not really intermediate difficulty, but it's still not too easy for most people. Other than the 100 day challenge, Brilliant offers you a huge variety of courses, ranging from mass physics all the way over to chemistry. And I really love the course concept, giving you a lot of interactive exercises on the way. Basically, you want to learn something about linear algebra, for example. You're going to go over to the linear algebra course and you want to learn something about dual spaces. Go over there, it's going to start off with an introductory text, what the chapter is going to be about. And then you're going to get yourself exercises, which are going to get progressively harder over time. And those exercises, going to be about calculations, understanding things, theorems, etc. You're going to plug in your answer into this answer catalog, one out of four answers correct, for example, or multiple choice questions. And if you got it right, hey, good, you understand something. If you didn't get it right, here's where the fun starts. You can get yourself the explanation to why something was right or wrong in the first place. And Brain is going to provide you with a really fleshed out answer to your question and maybe what you got wrong. So it's absolutely amazing. Brain really does a good job um, answering all the questions that you got wrong in the first place and it's really amazing. So I really love um, Brian and if you want to try it out for yourself make sure to use the link at the top of the description. You can try Brian for free using the link at least a big portion but if you really really use the link you're going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription so it's a really great deal considering how much content they have on, on their website at this point. Math history courses, chemistry courses etc. It's a lot of fun going over the stuff and you can also check out a live stream I did before to see for yourself how all of this works on print. So try it out and support channels where well. if you didn't enjoy this video anyways then make sure to um, subscribe to the channel, go over to Flamble Maths 2, subscribe there too and support the channel by um, buying the t-shirts created. Also support channel on Patreon. I'm until next video with you guys. Flamble day. Ciao.